welcome to the first modern four-door coupe. Hi guys, Eric here and welcome back to my channel. Today we will be having a look at this 2006 Mercedes-Benz CLS 350. It's definitely not difficult to love its sleek design, but this does come at quite the price. Congratulations to Luke Ayer for correctly identifying the wheel design of a Toyota Corolla Quest. Well done Luke, twice in a row. Would you like to be mentioned in my next video? All you have to do is to make sure that you're subscribed to my channel and tell me what car this wheel design belongs to using the comment section below. Be sure to identify both the make and model. Let's see who knows most about cars. A really big thank you to the accommodating, thoughtful and helpful staff here at ASJ Motors. They have a huge selection of quality used cars located in two locations in the Overberg region. One is in the industrial area of Hermanus, the other is located on the main road of Felicheborg. They are open for business so be sure to check out their catalogue, link in the description box below. The CLS is a four-door coupe produced by German manufacturer Mercedes-Benz. It began production in 2004 and ended in 2010. This is one of the very first four-door coupes in existence and became quite the popular model afterwards, with BMW, Volkswagen, Audi and Porsche making their own interpretation of the CLS shortly afterwards. The CLS was available with V6 and V8 power along with fire-breathing AMG models. Our test unit is fitted with a 3.5 litre V6 which produces 200 kilowatts. This is the same engine that is found in the S class as well as the SLK, E class and smaller C class. In this case, the engine propels the CLS from 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 7.8 seconds, yet returns an admirable 9.3 litres per 100 kilometers on a combined cycle. When it comes to its looks, I think it looks astonishing. It came out of nowhere with looks that appeared very different from other Mercedes models. The front is very sleek and low with a small grille and big Mercedes-Benz badge. In profile, it looks beautiful with very flared rear wheel arches, big rims and small windows. Kind of reminds me of older hot rods. The rear, in my opinion, is the most dramatic, with an extended integrated boot lid, big wraparound light clusters, and oversized dual exhaust pipes. The amazing thing is how cohesive all these design details appear. It works really well as a whole. What is the interior like though? Step inside the CLS and you're inundated with beautiful visuals and that unmistakable odour of older leather. They say that Mercedes from this era weren't quite as well built as those that came before it, but from where I'm sitting at least, I don't see it. It is all in the details and in the CLS at least, there are loads of them. Take for instance the stitching on the dash that lines up beautifully with this chrome strip that surrounds the air vents and this climate control panel that sits above the infotainment system. That's quite interesting. What's more interesting though is how you access the 6 CD changer. Have a look at this. My favourite design detail will have to be the circular air vents placed on an almost vertical dashboard. It's a retro look that goes together so well with the old money vibe you get from the rest of the interior. Build quality is excellent. This car is 16 years old and yet everything still feels so solidly put together. Fit and finish is amazing as well. Consistently small panel gaps can be found throughout the cabin along with beautifully integrated trim. Use of materials is very good too. There's leather on top of the dash, on the doors, the steering wheel, the center console and the seats. That being said though, some of the plastics, particularly those found on the switch gear, doesn't feel as though they fit in with a car of this ilk. This is true for most of its rivals of the time though. Let's have a closer look, starting with the door panel. 
Well, let's not beat around the bush here. It is beautiful. Its feminine curves mimic those of the exterior very well. There's leather and soft touch plastics abound in here. The armrest is softly padded and wrapped in leather and the door handle is a solid piece of metal. That being said, the switches might not feel quite as premium as you would expect. This is only by today's standards though, it was par for the course for the time. The doors also feel extremely heavy and solid and close with a very satisfying thud. The steering wheel is very similar to the ones you will find on the Mercedes CLK and the facelifted E-Class of the same time. It is quite the departure from older Mercedes steering wheels. It's much more rounded and curvaceous and this one design line makes it look as though it is smiling. The rim is wrapped in leather though and the buttons provide excellent feedback. Interestingly enough, the buttons are placed within these rounded covers which means that the unit does not move as a whole when you press it. I think it's really good attention to detail. The steering column is not only adjustable for rake and reach, but it is electrically adjustable, which means no more annoying levers for this guy. In true Mercedes fashion of the time at least, there's no stalks found on the right hand side of the column, only two on the left. One that controls the indicators along with the wipers and brights, and the other one that controls the cruise control. I wholeheartedly prefer the latter to steering mounted ones found on some of its rivals. This is so much simpler and easy to navigate. Turning to the dials, they definitely take some inspiration from older Mercedes models. From left to right, you get a rather oversized analog clock, a big speedometer with integrated drives information display, and a rev counter. All three dials are framed in a beautiful strip of chrome, but what is even more interesting is the needle for the speedometer. It is hinged on the side, not the center, so when it is moving up and down, it looks as though it is floating. I absolutely love that. One design detail I'm not so sure about though is the digital fuel and water temperature gauge. It doesn't look as though it fits in. It looks like a bit of an afterthought to be honest. Said driver's information display is pixelated and monocolor which is a bit dated by today's standards but it packs all the information you will possibly need. A comprehensive trip computer, vehicle settings, audio information and navigation info. That is very impressive for the age. The infotainment system though is a dead giveaway to the Mercedes CLS's age. Its graphics is rather pixelated and the menu structure is unintuitive. Amazingly, this model is fitted with factory Bluetooth, but this doesn't allow audio streaming, nor do you get an auxiliary input or a USB port. The many buttons is a welcome addition to help navigate the system, and that is necessary though because this isn't a touchscreen. The Harman Kardon sound system sounds absolutely amazing, so put in some old school CDs and road trips will be an absolute joy. Turning to the seats, they are really comfortable, a bit on the firm side, but they provide excellent support. The driver's seat is 10-way electrically adjustable and has three memory settings, and both front seats have adjustable lumbar support, so unless you are really tall, you will not have an issue finding a comfortable driving position in here. With the design out of the way, let's talk about the CLS's practical side, starting with storage solutions. Well, it's a bit of a hit and miss. The well-dampened glove box is of a very good size. You get an ashtray placed in front of the gear lever, a surprisingly deep compartment in front of the armrest, and another deep compartment placed underneath the armrest itself. The door pockets are a bit too small though, you don't get a sunglasses holder, and crucially, no front cup holders. That's right, no cup holders for the front occupants. That is quite the missed opportunity if you ask me. Get in the back and you start to realize that there's a definite trade-off to the beautiful sloping roofline. Headroom is limited and that is me being kind. Knee room isn't too bad but foot room isn't great either. You don't even get a middle seat, instead you get these covered storage compartments which is an interesting decision. 
Speaking of which, storage solutions back here aren't bad at all. You get these covered compartments in the middle, along with small door pockets, pockets behind each front seat, along with each passenger's own ashtray, which I find hilarious. You also get two cup holders placed within the drop-down armrest. One of my favorite amenities back here, though, has to do with your very own air vents and temperature control. That being said, I will happily trade in more than half of these amenities for a bit more space and a bigger rear window. Children might not be extremely happy back here. The boot tries to make up for this by being a very respectable size of 505 liters. You also get four tethering hooks and a full size spare wheel. That being said, the rear bench can't fold down, which drastically limits its practicality. Thankfully though, unless you're a biker or a carpenter or have a profession where you need to load longer items, it shouldn't stand in your way too much. So far, the CLS have really conjured up some surprises. Does the driving experience follow suit? Starting with driving around town, the CLS performs much better than I was expecting, particularly when it comes to all-round visibility. We had a Volkswagen Passat CC which has a similar shape, but visibility in here is much better, particularly at the rear. The engine is more than willing to do some lane weaving during rush hour traffic and the gearbox, while not a dual clutch system, is very well mated to the engine. The suspension soaks up the bumps very well and the seats are nice and comfortable. As standard, you get front and rear park distance control which is great but you don't get a reversing camera which isn't exactly ideal. I have become surprisingly reliant on one of those. Out of the twist season, the CLS performs all right. That is, if you have the suspension set in the stiffest settings. In comfort mode, it wallows about like the true cruiser it really is. The steering is similarly numb and rather lifeless, but it is quite well weighted, which inspires a monicum of confidence. It is out on the open road though where the CLS truly comes into its own. Even with these wide tires, tire roar and road noise is very well muted. The engine is more than strong enough to overtake should the opportunity arise and the seats are really comfortable. The Harman Kardon sound system does an excellent job of drowning out any unwanted noise on top of that too. I can really see myself in this car over long journeys. That is if I am sat in front. The CLS performs surprisingly well when it comes to reliability too. It is known to be more reliable than the E-Class on which it is based. There are some reports on electrical faults and Mercedes-Benz parts in general is rather expensive. It is also of utmost importance that you find one with a full service history. These are complicated machines. Lastly, there is always a chance you can buy a lemon. Your risk should be rather low with the CLS though. Usually, I will take some time to discuss the CLS's rivals, but it is the first four-door coupe of the time. You will have to sacrifice two doors and some rear legroom if you want to go for a BMW 6 Series of the same era. Now, I understand that this review has quite a lot of information that's being thrown at you, so let me take this time to simplify it for you. If you love its looks, you can afford its maintenance, and you don't have a big family that consists mainly of large people, buy the CLS. There are few cars on this road that can make you feel this special and accomplished. Otherwise, Move along, this is definitely a car you buy with your heart and not your mind. And that is quite the accomplishment. Well done, Mercedes. 
Thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. If you enjoyed it, please remember to give it a thumbs up. It makes a world of difference to my channel. If you haven't already, remember to subscribe and get notifications of upcoming reviews. I have loads more coming up for you guys, so stay tuned. If you own a CLS350 or 500 even, and you'd like to share your experiences with me, please use the comment section below. I would love to hear your stories. I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Until next time, Bye.